of it. The show where the backward compatible crew and their guests tell improvised stories through role-playing games. This, the inaugural season of Roll With It, is a five-episode scenario titled The Eden Program, a dystopian psychological thriller conceived by Adam Doc Bracken and Chris Krueger. It is run using primetime adventures by Matt Wilson of Dog Eared Designs. The Devil's Advocates. You awake in a dimly lit room. You blink. You almost feel as if your eyes are new, fresh, being used for the first time. In this room, it appears to be some kind of waiting room, maybe. There aren't many chairs, four easy chairs facing one another, and as you glance around at one another, you see the same confused expression as you imagine must be on your own face. You notice each of the other two men in this room with you, early 20s, clean shaven, apparently wearing the same jumpsuit, a sort of light powder blue, a little badge, the name on your chest. What do you do? Do you guys, do you, do you guys speak English? Is that, do I speak, I speak English. How do you, wait, are we speaking English? Are we speaking? Or are we just understanding what each of us are saying? We is could it, be speaking it, another language. Are we even hearing anything or is it just going directly to our brains? I'm going to assume based on the fact that I hear voices and your lips are moving. Let's get assumption. We're all speaking the same language. Let's not jump to any conclusions. Everything's in the said, But for I the purpose of assumption. Okay. Assumption. Okay. So, waiting room. Like, this says waiting room to me. I mean, stand up. Stand and start walking around. You feel the power of your own body. The room is white, um, or at least it used to be. It's a little dusty in here, a little dirty. You, your footprints of the shoes you're wearing leave very clear footprint marks in the slight ever so slight level of dust that covers the entirety of the floor here. Hmm. Seems like we might have been here for a while. I put my hand against the wall and just walk along it and leave a big streak on it to see if there's anything behind. It's a, actually a pattern print. It is a, a whitish kind of wallpaper, but uh, there appears to be like a, a, a paisley pattern embedded in it. Is it like a sink somewhere? I'm kind of thirsty. Not in this room. I go ahead and stand up as well. But how did, I how don't, did we get here? I, I don't remember how we got here. I don't remember anything before being in this room. Did one of you put us here? I, Perhaps. I think I would have remembered if, if I did that, right? Would you? Or are you just pretending? Uh, Glancing around the room, you notice framed posters. Um, all the same style. They seem to have been well designed and they all are what appear to be um, welcome notices or um, other type of well it seems almost like propaganda to you of what is called the Eden program you notice strange religious overtones in the words that are being used um, born again Hmm, I check myself uh, to see 
uh, if I have any you know tattoos or markings that might indicate something about my past. Okay, those are going to be your stakes. You guys? I'm inspecting the beds we woke up in. Okay. To see if there's... You woke up in the chairs, actually. Oh, in chairs? Yes. I'm going to go ahead and inspect them for any anything, pamphlets, stuff like that. Certainly. I'm going to look closely at the, the notices and the posters to see if like there's any like organization information, dates, names, anything. Fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and spend three budget for the scene. Each of you gets two because your screen presence is two for this episode. I forgot I get a free one. All right. Now, at this point, you can also... Um, use an edge to gain a card if you'd like, but you'll notice your character sheets are blank. It's at this point that you have the freedom to simply, let's say, remember an aspect of yourself, or perhaps discover is a better word. Just be careful, because as soon as you write it down, it's permanent. Since I'm looking for anything, small clues and hints to, to what what might have brought us here. Mm -hmm. I would, I'll say that Freddie Black has a fine eye for detail. Excellent. Go ahead and pencil it in and take another card. Any other takers? Too early. Got it. Go ahead and review. Two successes here. Nothing. That's the number to see. One. one success? Uh, one. One? Okay. Uh, you find nothing meaningful, nothing of interest beyond what you've already seen. Uh, apparently your answers lie beyond the door. There's only one door? Yes. Hmm. So either the room was built around us, or we came through that door to get here. Is there a, or is there some sort of a knob on the door? Does it look like there's a way to open it? Yeah, really? absolutely. All right, I open the door. Okay. Or attempt to. Freddie, because of your curiosity, um, in the last scene, you're going to be uh, the principal in this particular scene. As you step through the door, you merge into a massive, what appears to be factory floor. Um, there is a hallway aspect to this, and there's glass between you and the factory floor proper, but uh, other than the emergency lighting and the red hum of the emergency lights, uh, or I should say the hum of the red emergency lights, you, you really see and hear nothing. It's eerily quiet. Again, that level of dust is on everything, and certain things are just kind of faded and in tatters. It is cracks. The what certain things? The machinery that's in the other room, um, a series of, of tubes and wires and, and bundles of and uh, technology. Where? How is this room being lit? Right now, just by emergency lighting. Is this just like a, a hallway with one long window on one side? Yes. Or is it correct. just glass encased? No, it is a, a wall on one side, and it appears like there are more doors, presumably leading to rooms like the one you just came from. Hold on, I would I would caution all of us. Uh, if we open these doors, we could assume that there could be more people like us in there, but we don't know what sort of people they are. Well, if they're like us, they'll probably be wanting answers, and maybe they'd have a better idea of what we should I do. I don't really trust either of you yet. I don't want to start mixing in other people. Well, if I they're all like you, we probably have to worry about that, too. Are any of the machines moving? Are they just still? No. There appear to be some... Uh, blinking lights on a far panel in the hallway or in the in the machine yeah. yeah in the machine room proper you can't really tell how to get into the factory floor from here are there any labels like plaques signs on the doors that sounds like your stakes we can clearly see into the factory you can and this hallway moves further down around a corner or uh, yes actually there's a door at the end there's no curves but there's doors also along the walls as well? There are. And then there's a final door down towards the end. Right. Um, that's definitely the door that I want to check out. Okay. In fact, 
are you going to try to mess with any of these other doors? Because if so, I, I will try to stop you. No? no. Okay. Then I'm going to go try to, to check out the other door. Uh, I, I guess I, I guess I give them both an eye to make sure that they're not messing with the other doors, and then I go check the door at the end of the. As hall. you as you walk that direction, you notice an arrow painted on the floor in the direction that you're walking. Okay, really, mm-hmm. it, and it's not a any sort of like lit or glowing arrow. It's just painted onto the floor. Um, or is it like LED lighting? Or is that it actually like... sounds like your states. Okay, to what examine the arrow? Yeah, to to find out more information about that. I can see into the factory. I want to know either what the factory actually is or what it's making. Okay. Because this has me entranced. What what name is on your lapel? Jefferson. Okay. Um, absolutely, Jefferson. So, everyone draw two. Now, again, you have an opportunity to create an edge, should you so desire, and give yourself an additional card. Would like to remember flashes of engineering school. Excellent. <laughs> um, both applied and focused. Excellent. So. I'm only going to spend one budget for this scene, giving myself two cards. Is that it? Mm-hmm. All right, reveal. I have mind. one, two successes. One success. One success. Two success. Okay. Uh, Yes, it appears that this arrow was intended to be lit. In fact, the panel is removable, should you choose to do it. I remove the panel. Fantastic. Uh, who has the highest card? Certainly not me. <laughs> I have a five. I have um, a jack. Well, you had a jack, so actually, uh, Jefferson, you're narrating again. Um, go ahead and tell us how he um, proceeds and, and what he uh, discovers. Is this one of the um, emergency lighting? It's, things the, mentioned it's before? the arrow. The, the, I'm, it's the it's arrow in the, the floor. Yeah, the panel just for the, the arrow. Yeah. That should have been lit. Do you peel, it, uh, peel the arrow back? It snaps out of place with a loud click. And uh, inside there are cables, a very simple bowl rests on the along the bottom of it. Mm. Um it's cavernous for an arrow and a single lamp and there are large cables running the length of it okay you can also tell no power is is getting to it there's no hum there's no evidence of power so this facility then has no power it's just running on emergency generator it would seem so wasn't the waiting room lit it was but it was lit the same way or not. It was dimly lit. So those could have been part of the emergency lights. Yeah. Difficult to know. Interesting. Um, that really gives you a choice. You can continue to the end of the hallway and out that door. Of course, there's still the, the doors uh, along the hallway, presumably like the rooms you came from. Or you can now hop down into this, what appears to be kind of a Jeffrey's tube access tube maintenance hallway of sorts. Yeah, I'm going to go inside and check it out. Into the hallway? No, yeah, into the uh, Jeffrey's two, the two. Okay, into the maintenance about. hallway. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, so dropping down that way, you see that it mirrors uh, everything else. And what's interesting is um, down here, in right below where the rooms would have been, almost kind of like a giant honeycomb type network. Mm. Uh, you could see the outlines of beams. Um, they're actually the the floor supports the struts. Uh, underneath each one, but each room has underneath it. In in fact, it almost seems exactly the place where the chairs would be. Uh, there is a giant piece of machinery, and uh, only three of them, the three that appear to be under the three chairs that you were sitting in, have what appears to be power. Um, and there's still a hum and a thrum and uh, one of them appears to be vibrating wildly. Which one of, the ones that, one of the ones that we were sitting in? Yeah, of the, what what looks like was probably it? about 60 or so of these little, um, I don't know, they, they almost look like, like, like giant dispensers of some kind. Uh, Are they removable? Rem- they're, they're enormous. Oh. 
And uh, underneath the where, where your chairs appear to have been are the only three of the 60 or so that are powered. Okay, but they're all powered. They, they all look like they were being powered the same way. But they would be powered said, the same way. At least way, in one in particular. Three are vibrating. On. Three are Oh, on. just, okay, three. I misunderstood. Yeah. Okay. But again, they appear old and barely functional. So I'm so uh, they're both still above me, right? I assume they have yes. come down. So I I, I uh, you know poke my head out and I sort of relay the information uh, that I have seen down there, and I say it seems like we are more than likely the only three survivors of what I don't know of what, but it seems like ours were the only place that had any sort of power. You know, this is a this seems to be a fairly you know contained facility. So I would assume that this is the these other rooms projects? are probably corpses. Well, they probably don't even have corpses if, if they came through the tubes. That's true. They're just, They're just pipes full there. of corpses then. Yeah. Hmm. Not opening those doors, I don't think. Yeah, let's let's not open this door. Should we follow the arrow and keep going? I mean, there, Is there any other place? I mean, it's basically n- no other place to go in these tubes. It was just to sort of see. That's right. What did you see yeah. underneath like the factory floor, like the machinery? What was underneath there? I didn't, you didn't say I saw Nothing anything. but uh, holes. With the, the, the giant massive cables leading into the holes. So presumably those go under the factory floor and connect up to whatever that machinery is. Okay. Yeah, I think we should... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually climb out and I guess start heading towards the, the door at the end. I offer you my hand to help pull you out. Okay. Um, I hesitate and then cautiously accept it. Look, I mean, if we're the only three people, we don't have to worry about anyone else. Okay? We need to trust each other. It, if, you, if you think everyone else is dead... That's like, what, 57 dead people? Let's not make that 58 or more. It takes a firm shoulder to get the door open, um, but it finally creaks open with a a rusty groan. And you find yourself in what appears to have once been a rather nice uh, little ante room. You see the word customs in a giant sign that is dangling from the ceiling precariously it appears to have fallen at least in some sense some of the wires have snapped um, you see multiple lanes of it reminds one of an airport security uh, line with like six lanes but only two are open right and of course everything is shut down dusty emergency lighting um, nothing stopping you from Walking straight on through. Are there any signs like you would find in an airport airport security line? Many, actually, with many different types of instruction. Where to collect your belongings, uh, what to do if you uh, have questions. Um, the the officer on duty has the um, permission to terminate you. Um, things like that. This doesn't feel like any airport I've been to. Do you remember being at an airport before? I, I remember airports. Those are things. They exist. Mm. I can't remember being at one before. I, but I, I'm aware of them. Perhaps we should go to baggage claim and see if we have any belongings. Are we the belongings? Are we the baggage? We could so, be the baggage. Right, but we could at least check. Of uh, the philosophical, philosophical quandaries of being luggage. <laughs> the security doors appear to be locked down. There's a sign that says orientation, but you are not able to pass through the turnstile. It has uh, a very large pylon that has come down from the ceiling and blocked it. And wow. as, as if emergency uh, security measures were put into place. And there's no way to squeeze, but like, is it like bars that we can squeeze between? You or can jump certainly over try. It? Uh, usually, like, if you like, have- those can be your stakes. The security officers have getting those, past security. Yeah, getting past. Those uh, security officers have little podiums with like scanners and stuff. Mm-hmm. Would that might have a uh, emergency release button somewhere? It just might. So you want to look to see if you can find a way to release the security. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and what what do you want to do, Mister Jefferson? Are we would wait to see if either of them succeeds? Okay. Very well. We have our stakes. No budget for this scene. Again, I offer you the opportunity to take edges should you desire. This will be your last reminder. At this point, it will be up to you. 
I have one success. No successes. Uh, one. Okay. Then, um, yeah, you have succeeded. You've met the the number. You are able to bypass security. There appears to have been a place where um, someone has cut through the bars of the turnstile. Hmm. And you would guess the recent past. How so, recent? Well, you tell me, because... You have the high card. Okay. Um, you know, as I as I look at the that the turnstile to see if there's any way past it, I notice that there seems to be some sort of a um, it seems to be cut very sm- very uh, smoothly around the edges, as though someone used some sort of a um, large slicing tool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and it seem it seems like it's it's. Difficult to determine exactly how long ago it was, but uh, it, it must have been after the factory had shut down. You can tell by the dust. Right. You guys going through? If he's found yeah. a way through, I'll follow him. Well, this is not the way to, to uh, orientation, according to the signs. This is actually um, for personnel only. This is the offices. Uh, it is security. It is the tech deck. It is... Um, computer terminals. This seems even more useful. um, This is definitely a place that someone like you probably shouldn't be. I also know what I want my edge to be when we get there. Okay. uh, Was the orientation door locked? Yeah, it was was blocked off from the turnstile. Yeah. Um, So, passing through, you you recognize that you are now behind the scenes of this thing in a place that, um, if the passenger metaphor is correct, no passenger would ever see. And what's perhaps most surprising is that even though the emergency lights are on, actually quite a number of these um, terminals and uh, very, very large computers are flashing, blinking. Um, they appear to be on and functional. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can access um, any information about our, the facility on the computers. You got it. In any means. And um, also for my edge, I'm going to just go that I like I know hacking mm-hmm. I'm a computer you hacker straight up so straight up yeah I'm gonna look for like a map okay uh, how are you gonna look for a map are you gonna look for a print map fire, uh, fire escape map okay um so an emergency map mm-hmm. okay great um and what are you doing I'm looking for operations manuals the day to day guides and how people work here okay physical printouts the massive yep. Um, three ring binders that are as big as your head. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to go ahead and spend some budget on this. And I'm going to use my fine eye for detail again. Good idea. And of course, you threw one in for hacker. Right. right. Okay. Two successes. That's your two successes to beat. Excellent. Nothing. Just one. Who's got the highest card? Jack. Uh, queen. I see a queen. Two. So. Uh, you are going to narrate, Mr. Stevens. Call me Joe. Um, so what were you trying to do? I was looking for like a map of the facility, like an emergency escape route thing. Like, if there's a fire, go here map. Okay, and what was your name? Uh, Freddie Black. All right. Uh, Mr. Black is able to find along the wall one of those large uh, displays with the you are here sign, a little pointer. And uh, indicating all of the emergency exits. Uh, There seems to be one relatively close to where we are. I don't know the full layout of the building. But let's say that it's... You do know. Oh, I do know? Yeah. Okay. Um, Then let's say it's, uh, you know, behind uh, the back door in the personnel uh, wing, the one that we're in right now. I'm going to look for, like, the room where we woke up in, like... To see what that looks like on the map? Yeah. What is it labeled? And, And the rooms that were in that hallway as well. Um, those are just those are just labeled um, occupancy, and there's nothing really specific. So and there's no other entrances or exits to those rooms except the ones we used. Right. At least on, at least the show on the map. Mm. The map seems to be really more focused on showing emergency exits as opposed to um, specific every, every, information about every, everything. Worth right. Yeah. The, the entire wing of what you were thinking of as the factory floor is labeled arrivals. Through the factory, hmm? Do, did, does that mean we came through the factory? 
it means you emerged whenever you uh, woke up in a place called Arrivals. Arrivals Occupancy, to be precise. Is there another wing called Departure? Yes. Is it close by? Yes, it's out uh, past Orientation. Why don't we go through Orientation and see, see what's on the other side? And see what's on Departures? Yeah. It okay. might offer a way out if we need to get out. Do we want to get out? Well, I don't really see any reason to stay here. Yeah. Especially with the power out. Emergency if, lights, perhaps. I mean, that's not going to last forever. Is there a release for the uh, orientation door in here somewhere? I assume also that there must be some sort of ventilation pumping in, you know, or a back air door for us. Mm-hmm. There's got to be so, like a, a for employees only door to orientation for like the presentation. Actually, the air is very stale. Really, very stale. Yes. Now you did not tell us um, how your success went. Oh, I just had one success. Oh, you only had I one didn't success. Oh, okay. Uh, was there another who had a double success? No, I had two. Yeah, I oh, was right, okay. two. Um, so yeah, you make your way then through this. This part is actually quite dark. The, the emergency lighting here is not as good as it was out in the other area. Um, but you are finally able to make it through to where you think um, the orientation would have led, and. It's a maze of corridors and offices and glass and one room looks like the next, looks like the next cubicle, looks like the... Oh, it's so confusing. But you're finally able to, to pop past um, into what appears to be a main hallway or, or some kind of a, an entry hallway for the, the staff because it is wood-lined, um, beautiful oak panels, if we could see it. And some, well, this room is very dark, yes. Um, but it, it has, uh, again, art. Um, if we could see it. And it has a table with um, some things on it, a little candelabra. That kind of, it, almost, it almost looks like a, the entryway to a mansion is the way that it's been decorated here. And there is a, a sign, a little panel here that uh, lists offices and points the direction you just came. Uh, admissions and, and goes to the other uh, direction and so on and so forth. You seem like like you've managed to make it to the employee entrance and can now get to pretty much anywhere from, from this point based on what you saw from the map and what you're reading on the signs now. So where should we go next? Well, um... Departures? There's also a massive hmm. double door here um, that says Office of the President. I kind of want to see what's up with the pit off to the president and see if he has maybe some sort of master terminal that can give us more information on this place. Is there any sort of door handle or lock or on the double doors? Yeah, there's a, a double handle, actually. Do they, do they open? Do they give? Yes. Let's go in. Let's visit the president. The very first thing that you see is the reception area. Uh, very large, ornate. Uh, this is decorated like a Roman uh, basilica. And the decorations seem very different from the rest of the building. Yeah. It's like like personal taste kicked in here. Okay. And past that and past the the secretary's desk and, uh, you know, the the, the tech there that is, of course, also in shambles, um, past this place, which is more light than it should be, mostly because of the marble reflecting. Um, you then enter another set of double doors. Also, it gives, and you are suddenly in the president's uh, suite. Massive, round office. Reminds you of the uh, idea of an oval office of a much different kind of presidency. Hmm. Again, decorated with a Roman theme. Windows? Any windows? Yes. What's out the windows? A overgrown, almost jungle of a garden. Is that all that we can see? That's um, all you can see. Does it is look, overgrowth? Is that there aren't any other, any other buildings? No, it appears to be a courtyard. So you can see what glimpses you can see past that. You can you can see the wall of the factory, essentially, oh, and other offices. Okay. So it's an interior. So we're looking at an interior. It's an interior courtyard. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Someone hasn't paid the gardener recently. I'm going to go through all of his file cabinets and his desk and look for whatever is most recently timestamped. Okay. As soon as you go around the other side of the desk, you see the old man crumpled in his chair. Uh, He has slumped over the desk. He's wearing a strange hat of some kind and what what appears to be some kind of bodysuit with hundreds of wires sticking out of it. I take the hat. <laughs> I want I want the hat. The hat is connected with a very large cord um, and traces over to a very strange looking device which appears to have been dragged into this room forcibly. What does the device look like? Well it's on. Is it is okay? I check the device to see if it's. You want to see? You want to see if you can figure out what this device is? Yes. Okay, those are your stakes. Is the is the body restrained? Was he restrained? No, no. He appears to be um, quite comfortable. He has a strange smile on his face. How 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 dead is he? Like <laughs> completely dead. Like skeleton dead. As are the other two old men in this room. Oh, there's two other. The, one is slumped against the wall. Uh, and the other is slumped against the wall right next to him. Do they have devices as well? Like No. Suits? And devices. No. Um, but they have apparently been dragged there based on the um, the dust pattern from the desk area over into the corner. Any indication oh, of how they, they died? Well, hold on. They've been dragged because of the... That means they've been dragged after so, the facility shut down because it's the, after the dust was already there, which means they were dragged recently. Or at least, you know... Recently, at least closer, a hundred years instead of two hundred. These guys. Awesome. You, so you want to see? You want to see when they died? Is what you want to know? And how? And how? Okay. Cause of death. Uh, nature of the device. Still looking for most recent memos. Anything like that? Is the wires coming out of his out of his suit? Are they connected to anything or just? In yes, the suit? they are also. Well, they 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 all come away into a big bundle, which goes into a cord, and the cord connects to the other cord from the hat, and then all of that goes into the machine, which is all just tubes and wires and linking lights and a casing. Uh, Okay, so this is a pretty big scene, so I'm spending some pretty significant budget here. I'm going to spend the last, uh, this one, last uh, point of my fine detail. Okay. Is this any sort of computerized device or not? Like, Yes, absolutely it is. So then I could possibly have some sort of recognition certain. based on hacker. For certain. There's also a, let's call it a monitor on the desk itself. It appears to be on. Two successes. Nothing. Uh, two. I got three successes. Mr. Highest. And Queen? Or? I have a uh, ace. Okay, so you get to describe um, how it is or why it is that you're not able to complete your tasks. Because something significant has just occurred. Okay. Um, May I make a suggestion? Yes. An alarm trips. Um, That makes sense. Yeah, so as I go to uh, start fiddling with the device, um, a a very loud blaring alarm starts going off throughout this facility. And then I I, I kind of step back and, whoa, I, I didn't do it. There's an automated message. Warning, intruder alert. Intruders detected. Security has been dispatched. Stay where you are. Do not attempt to flee. Okay, so all I know is that we should definitely not stay where we are. We need to get the heck out of here. Yeah, even if security's still alive after all this time, I don't want to be here when they come. Is there any way I can quickly pull the hat off? Get the hat? No, it appears to be hardwired in. Um... This thing looks like it was botched together in somebody's garage. Hmm. It does not look factory made like the rest of the machinery in this place. Does it look familiar? There's an air of familiarity about it. When I ask, I mean, if I walk into a computer store, all Mm -hmm. computers are familiar, even if I don't recognize them. Right. I've never seen them. I I understand. Um, You marvel at the strangeness, the ingenuity behind this kind of a thing. Sort of the way we look at uh, Nikola Tesla's inventions nowadays. But before you can just 
You almost have it on the tip of your tongue. I grab you by the shoulders like, come on, we need to get out of here. And we need to move. I haven't seen any disturbed us. There's no one coming. Yeah, but what if it's not someone that comes? Yeah, it could be some sort of a robotic thing. But possibly a robot. Let's go. And where would they take us? I don't want to find out. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I don't want to find out either. Let's go. <sighs> okay. Fine. You burst through the front door, out into blinding sunlight, <laughs> and find yourself in the uh, overgrown campus, front campus of this place, the, the front yard of the campus, I guess would be the way to say it. As you step out onto the steps, beyond this overgrown and unkept front yard is a very large iron fence. And beyond that is a cityscape. Um, Futuristic city. All glass and iron. Tubes. uh, Flying drones that you spot. Um, and quite a number of advertising lit up, apparently um, animated. You can't quite hear it, but you feel like on the edge, a few steps from now, you'll be able to to key into that. And you can tell that this place, this city, um, apparently has forgotten about this place you've come from but you're definitely going to have to deal with this reality that you are surrounded by a total urban center. And as we pull away, seeing the sign that says the Eden program, you see the security vehicles coming down the road. They're like giant Humvees headed your direction. Next time on the Eden program. Mr. Black, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Oh. I was not aware that you were safe. I'm going to look up city records. This place is shut down. The integration doesn't sound very good. You've got to get out of here. I'm not going to follow him. You're going to jump. Keep jumping across rooftops? Yeah. All right. I just don't trust that guy. I, I, is that just you being paranoid, or, or you have some other reason for trying to get us out of here? Oh, no. Guys, I'm a millionaire. This has been Roll With It, a production of BackwardCompatible.com. The Game Master for the Eden Program is Adam Doc Bracken, writing Primetime Adventures by Matt Wilson of Dog Eared Designs. Freddie Black is played by Brian McKittrick. James Jefferson is played by Will Parsons. And Job Stevens is played by Jim Weaver. Your producer is Chris Krueger. For the Backward Compatible crew, thank you for listening.